Well, what nonsense is in store for us today? Let's take a look at the swamp. Congress is out there in Washington, District of Columbia, Swampland. And in the middle of the night, they voted for a $1.2 trillion funding bill. $1.2 trillion. Do you know how long it would take you, if you counted 24 hours a day, do you know how long it would take you to count to a trillion dollars? It would take you 32,000 years, counting 24 hours a day. That's how much $1.2 trillion is. Not to mention our national debt, trillions of dollars. But it's not even so much the amount, it's not so much the sneaking around in the middle of the night so nobody will know that they're funding, it's what they are funding. Listen to this. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you from the, to the gentleman from Tennessee and thank you, Chairman Good, for leading this. Well, we have officially have the swamp's recipe for the failing of the American people. A massive government funding bill, chock full of wasteful spending, harmful policies and pork projects, truly, and I mean truly, released in the middle of the night, as was mentioned, 2.30 in the morning, giving lawmakers a little more than 24 hours to read an over 1,000 page monstrosity, only to pass it under suspension of the rules, relying on more Democrat votes than Republican votes, in a House Republican majority. Just like the first package, the swamp's second half of the omnibus represents a total surrender by Republican leadership. You know, compromise is one thing, but capitulation and surrender is a whole different beast. One that routinely serves Washington instead of serving the American people. To my House and Senate Republican colleagues, it's time to put your money where your mouth is because you can't claim to be a pro-life champion and then fund abortion, abortion travel, and aborted fetal tissue research. You can't rail against President Biden's intentional illegal invasion and then fund the policies that are causing the chaos without assuming the same responsibility. Just like you can't flaunt your vote to impeach Secretary Mayorkas and then fully fund his salary and his destructive border policies. You can't defend Americans' Second Amendment liberties and then fund gun control by the CDC. You can't support science and protect young women and then fund transgender surgeries and fund educational institutions that allow biological males to compete in women's sports. And I don't call them men. I call them biological males. Real men protect women, and they don't use their superior strength to steal the honor, hard work, and achievements of women. So all you ladies out there, I want to hear you like Riley Gaines. Speak up. We're fighting for you. You can't advocate for election integrity and then fund illegal aliens voting in federal elections. You can't complain about the violation of Americans' First Amendment rights and then fund more disinformation governance boards and government by proxy censorship. You can't sound the alarm in our dire economic outlook and ballooning national debt and then rubber stamp spending higher than Nancy Pelosi's levels from fiscal year 23. And the list goes on and on. Republicans simply cannot righteously denounce Democrats' disastrous policies that are destroying our great country and then turn around and fund them. Yet many will do that very thing later this morning and the American people will surely take note of those who do. After all, if you fund it, you own it. But it's not too late. We promised the American people that we would fix the, these problems, not fund these problems. So I urge my colleagues to vote no on the swamp's second half omnibus so we can deliver on that promise. Thank you now, and I'd like to yield to my good friend from Arizona, Chairman uh, Andy Biggs. Well, that it is. Now. News Jack.